What's up guys and welcome to a new Nyx video, but not just Nyx today. Uh, actually, I'm joined by Sub, who's going to be teaching me and us everything. Well, probably not everything, it's too big, but some and giving us the basics of crafting in PoE, which has been a huge hole in my education around PoE. So I need to fill that hole and understand it just a bit better. And that's why Sub is with me. Thank you so much, Sub, for coming and teaching me and us all about crafting. Yeah, my pleasure. Good to be here. So where do we start? What do I do? Okay, so we're going to start from the beginning. Uh, first off, what is your character name? Let me invite you to the party. Um, <laughs> it's Nix Vellum AF. Okay. Really? Okay. Yeah, AF see. Test. Affliction. There we go. All right. Oh, Affliction. Okay, not uh, the other AF. No, gotcha. no. <laughs> Excellent. All right, I will, uh, I will come to your hideout. Okay, please join. First off, we need to do a little bit of a test. I'm going to trade you something. Okay. Oh, are you not seeing the trade? Oh, oh you're leaving D&D &D on. Yeah, you have to leave it off if we're going to interact. Okay, it's fine. Yep. We're going to be fine. So, All right. So this is a heavy belt. Gotcha. Okay. What do you see? Tell, tell me what this is and tell me <laughs> what your understanding of this thing is. It's a belt. Uh, it's got plus 33 strength. And I know that if I hold the but the alt button, I'll get to see more. So this is an implicit modifier, which means, if I'm correct, Sub, that this is like, the it always comes on this item, something along those lines? Mm-hmm. Okay, tell me more. Is there anything else about it that uh, stands out to you? Any, any other attributes that you would call out for this? Oh, right. So item level 69 requires level 8. And also mm -hmm. I'm seeing there's like a band plus 33 and I guess p uh, between 25 and 35 is the value that this can roll as. Is there anything else about this item? It's there's a white one, item. <laughs> white item, there question? we go, exactly. No, nope, <laughs> okay. that was good, you got everything. All right, um, white now, item. all right. The, yeah, this, that's the main thing that we're, I was getting to you, we got there. Um, what does a white item mean to you? Like baseline, pretty much like the default. Sure. Okay, um, so what I like to describe it as is an empty canvas. Okay. And hey, we're, we'll stay with me. It's a little bit of a metaphor here. But, okay, I'm listening. Um, yeah, what I like to think of an item as is it is a an empty canvas that basically has most items. There are some exceptions, like a flask um, has a different number. Um, but it's basically a blank canvas that can have three prefixes and three suffixes. And there are different ways to modify what those prefixes and suffixes are. Um, I did specifically give you an item with an implicit. Right. Because that is an additional thing as well. But it lives separately. So that's basically a seventh line um, that lives separately from the right. prefixes and the suffixes. And the vast majority of crafting is taking advantage of or actually utilizing orbs. Uh, usually they're called, they're not all called orbs, but they're mostly called orbs to modify what is on that blank canvas. You are using these things to change what is on this canvas. Okay. So I'm going to trade you. Can I ask you, you can I ask you thing. a couple of questions? Yeah. Yeah. Always, always feel free to stop me. And, uh, okay, cool. So I, I um, first of all, I, um, is it possible that an item doesn't have an implicit? Yes. So there are blank canvases that are truly blank. Yes. Okay. Um, is it possible to have, I'm going to guess yes for m like more than um, six modifiers. So seven, I guess, more than seven modifiers. Um, yes, there okay. are exceptions for that, but it is those are additional things that have been added later on. The, right. The default is six plus a potential implicit. Plus a potential implicit, which is the plus 33 to strength here. Okay. Exactly. What's next? So, yes, um, what I just gave you is an orb of transmutation. Okay. Um, now, looking at this, and, and in fact, let me actually trade you something else just to really hammer this home, because you you might think of this as something different. Uh, I'm going to trade you both of these things. I know that this is worth a lot. <laughs> Ten so, dips is yeah. a lot, no? <laughs> and this is, this is a thing that I really want to hammer home here. Okay, okay, I'm Ironically, listening. Ironically, ignore what we just did and pretend that the things I just gave you were not tradable. Pretending, pretend you were playing this game all by yourself. No one else in the world played Path of Exile. 
and you are just playing by yourself. All right. What would you do if you saw these items? So like your instinct, right, is I know that these are used to trade with other people. Yes, that's actually my instinct right what now. Would, yeah. What would you do? Like, wh how, what do you feel about those things? What do you think about these things in a world where you can't trade with people? Well, these are not... I wouldn't consider these to have currencies I, I, or to be currencies. I guess they're just they're just what it says on the label, right? There are tools that are going to allow me to change the values of the modifiers of an item, basically. Both of these, anyway. Exactly. Right? Okay. <clears throat> and the one of the most beautiful things about Path of Exile, I think arguably the single best design decision that they ever made in making Path of Exile was there is no such thing as gold. There is nothing that has no inherent value besides it as a currency that you trade with. All currency, right. we call it currency, but all, all of these things are just orbs that their value is tied to their actual worth as something functional. Right. Like, it's like bartering in real life if we only traded bread and leather. And it's just like, <laughs> hey, here's bread, here's some milk, I need some leather. And it's all just functional things like, oh, I'm going to make some shoes out of this leather. Right. And that's, that's all it is. Um, and that's the most beautiful thing about the design of this game. And I just want to get that, <clears throat> we, we've got to get over that hump initially of when we look at these things, they are, when we're talking about crafting, try to ignore the trade value or anything of that. Okay. We're just going to try to think of these things as what they do for how they functionally change items. And this is right. like the beautiful thing about like the Like tools. Game. Okay. They're just tools. Okay. Um, so looking at the first one that I gave you is actually... Let's do a little bit of an additional trade here. And you are going to give me back those. Uh, actually, I just uh, took the wrong things out of my inventory here. Boom, 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 boom. You're going to trade me back those items because I don't want to confuse you. I just want to okay. get Here's your that, money. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, well oh. we're going to use them later. Okay. But I okay. just want to get that across. All right. Sure. So you're, you're not going to. We don't want to see those as money. We okay. just want to say that, you know, get that fundamental across. Okay, so what I just gave you, and in fact, let me give you one more thing. Oh my goodness, so okay. So we, uh, we can do everything here. Uh, if it's in my inventory. Let's see, boom, boom, boom. So what you have now in your inventory, if I just double check, yep. So right. these are what I consider all of the most basic, uh, basic of currencies. Uh, okay. There's one more that is still the basic currency, or there's two more, but we're gonna hold we're gonna hold off on those in a, for a second. Do they have so, different kind of like? Is it are some more rare than others? Yes, um, and the rarity actually goes up very clearly. So if you put the transmutation orbs, the one the forty right there, yeah. if you put that in the upper left corner, yeah, right there, and that pretty much goes down the line right. of the rarity on these items. Now the alchemy, um, which you have next to the scour, yeah, that I believe is around the chance orb. Um, okay. which is the third one down. Those should be a similar rarity. I, I could be slightly off on that, but they kind of all do, they, they all work in, uh, in tandem here. So the very first thing is the orb of transmutation. And right the here. really cool thing yeah. uh, is the visual of the orb actually indicates what it does. So if you look at the orb of transmutation, it says upgrades a normal item to a magic item. And if you look at the visual of the orb itself, yeah. it takes this like rough clay and there's blue coming out of it. It's saying, hey, take oh. this, you know, this really oh. rough item and turn it into something magical. Turn it into a blue item. Oh my God, and I never realized. And now I'm looking at the orb of alchemy and I'm like, wait a second, that's gold. Yeah, it takes this, takes this white item and it turns it into a golden yellow item. Wow. Exactly. Okay, cool. Yep. All right. So... so uh, Use an orb of transmutation. Right click it and click on the uh, the heavy belt. Here we go. So I've just gotten two additional modifiers and it's a prefix and a suffix. So technically, yep. or suffix. So technically, suffix. if I'm if I'm correct here, there's two more slots for prefixes and two more slots for suffixes that are not used. Yes, if the item is rare. Um, so okay, tell me there more. Are a few yeah, the most important thing that you did here is you changed the rarity of the item. There are a few item, there are a few orbs that will change the rarity of an item. Okay. That is a transmutation. That is an alchemy. Um, that is a regal as well, which uh, I will trade you in a second. And that is also a chance orb. So uh, the transmutation orb very specifically only changes it from a white item to a magic item. Okay. And magic items are. 
they, they are restricted to only having one prefix and one suffix. And that is just, it, it restricts the number of modifiers that you can have in the, on the canvas of your item there. Right. Okay. So can I use this again? No. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> so yep. I, it so, has to be a normal item, of course, for me to use it. I gotcha. I got it. Exactly. Exactly. So the next item that you can use is the orb of alteration. So there's, uh, oh. there's the idea of changing the rarity, but then there's also re-rolling the modifiers within the rarity. So an orb of alteration will re-roll all of the modifiers on the item, but keep it the same rarity. And when you re-roll an item, there is a chance that it either gets one prefix, one suffix, in the terms of in chance of a, a magic item, or it gets a bo both a prefix and a suffix. And the chances for that are actually uh, very deterministic. What does that mean? Um, so that means that it is a set percentage roll for when you do a reroll, whether it gets you know one prefix, one suffix, or both. Um, for a magic item, I actually don't know those odds. Okay. But it is, uh, yeah, it is. I believe more likely that you'll just get one modifier instead of two. Right. Yeah. I, I got. A, I, I tried it a few times and I got a bunch of like just one line and now I've got two. bunch of singles. Yep. Bunch of singles. Okay. You got to use the right terminology. <laughs> All right. I, I, that's, I, I just said that. I don't think that's the right, <laughs> any specific term. Okay. So, yep. So that's the orb of alteration. Uh, now use one until you only have one modifier on your belt. Okay. Now, oh, I, this now is actually a go... good tip, right? I learned this recently that if you want to use a, a currency multiple times on an item, you like keep shift on. So yeah, if I, if I wanted to roll this multiple times, I just keep pressed on shift and then left click and I can just keep going. All right. Yep, and that's how you can very easily accidentally roll over the mod modifier <laughs> that you want to land on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yep. So uh, here I am, plus that. 133 to armor. Okay. Beautiful. You're so tanky now. Um, <laughs> so the next, the next orb I want you to look at is the orb of augmentation, which is okay. the bottom left, the bottom left one that you have. This one here. Okay. Augments a magic item with a new random modifier. So magic is blue. And rare is yellow. Okay, so I have a blue item here. Augments a magic item with a new random augments. Mm, so that means I'm going to get a second one. Ooh, and can I use that multiple times? No. Nope. Okay, so this, this is just for to go from one to two, from singles to double. And that is... You, you're you're crafting <laughs> look um, at me <laughs> okay look at you so uh, literally literally like i i want to emphasize that the three orbs that you used this is a very foundational step in a lot of crafting right um, alteration and augment spamming is like some of the biggest crafts in the game start with just doing this right um particularly like if you want to craft a big boy amulet or anything like that you will often spam for like plus one all spell skill gems and tier one crit multi and then there's a lot of steps that you can do afterwards, but that is a very, very fundamental part of crafting. And, you know, you're already a good percentage of the way there. So when it comes um, to like these tiers, what's the range of these tiers that I'm looking at here? So um, we can jump ahead. Actually, let's hold off on that a little bit. Okay, no problem. Um, yeah, I will say that the range of the tiers is dictated by the item level of the item. Uh, mm -hmm. But I do... And I do want to get into a little bit of the odds and how these roll if we have time and you want to get into a little bit of extra detail there. But yeah. Yeah. Basically, the higher item level, the higher the tier that you can go. Um, a complaint that I have uh, for video games across the board is no, there is no standard for whether tier one is the best or the worst. In Path of Exile, tier one means best. Um, I believe in Last Epoch, tier one is the worst. So this is a, it's just annoying and yeah. you know, depending on what video game you're playing. Just gotta focus. The, the tier five is like tier seven, I think is the best in last epoch. Yeah. But so yeah, that's the thing. Uh, tier one is the best. And so it's you have tier one reduced class charges used. Yeah. And it's, um, so I'm seeing yeah. also the range. I don't want to jump ahead here, but it says here the range is 20 to 10. So I'm guessing 10 is better. And I have 17 and I'm guessing I'm limited by my item, the level of the item potentially, or why is it not 10, for example, considering I'm tier one? Uh, why is what not 10? Um, so see, like on the reduced flash charges, I see 17, then in parentheses, 20 to 10. So that means that the best would be 10, right? 10% 10 reduced flash charges uh, used? So the range may, might not specifically be the best. Um, right. On the right, on the right side, right? Because it's reduced flash charges used. 
So you actually want more reduced. Oh. Right? You want to use fewer flash charges, right? Right. Okay. Okay. Um, but yes, so <laughs> everything in Path of Exile, this is another thing that uh, a lot of people have difficulty getting over is the fact that everything in PoE is random. And this, I believe, is actually a really good design decision that they've stuck to. Um, because if anything gets too deterministic, it people do get bored. Um, if everything is just like, oh, I do these deterministic things, I get to exactly what I wanted, I have the perfect roles on everything, and then I'm done. People get bored of that. So giving you something to chase for, to strive for perfection, is one of the things that is very, you know, it keeps people going. It's, it's that chase. And so anytime anything rolls in Path of Exile, it's going to be a random range, you know, right. for like your modifier values here. And 20% uh, would be perfect. You want to hit that 20% reduced flash charges used. Okay. Um, but you could hit 10%. And like 10% is actually only, if you think about it, tier two would probably be something like 7 to 9%. Oh, so 10 is, okay. Right? Yeah, so okay. Tier two would only be, ten, if you had 10%, if you had a bottom roll, you would literally only be 1% better than a top roll of tier two. And okay. so if you hit like a tier one mod, but you're at the bottom roll, that could feel really bad because you're barely better than tier two. Right. But, okay. But if you hit sense. a top roll and you hit, you know, like tier one life, I believe it goes up to is 90 to 99. If you hit 99 life, oh, I think that might be with a catalyst. But if you have 99 life on your belt, you're like, damn. Okay. All right. Now I'm feeling real good. Like you, if you hit that, it's an additional thing right. that can feel bad. But when you hit it, it feels really good. Um, wow. So okay. Regarding the range. Uh, I mean, yeah, screw it. Let's do it right now. If you uh, hit something that you're excited about, hit a modifier that you find interesting, and uh, you know, look at the range. And, <laughs> Are you just gonna be a yeah. div to use on this belt? <laughs> do it. Do it. Okay. Like, okay. Look, yeah. What, what do you got right now? This, well, this looks like a beautiful belt. This, you know, not every. This isn't the belt that other people want, but this is your belt. <laughs> this is my and belt. Having having that joy and saying, you know what, I hit that plus nine life on my hail heavy belt of the lost. <laughs> no one else has that. So let me get yeah, this straight. So the tier is 10 here. So I'm still going to be playing around with that tier. But if I randomize the values, there's a chance that it can go from three to nine and from five to 10 on the suffix. Yes. Okay. It'll reroll all of those modifiers. Let's go. No. Perfect. <laughs> it went down. There we go. That's what we want to see. So yeah, that's that's another thing. It's that's how it works. It's all about the randomness. And okay. And it, it can go down. It can feel bad. You can hit really unlucky streaks. But maybe you hit this, you know, you're rolling this item and you get really lucky. You use one divine and you hit perfect everything. And that's just I a mean, jackpot. That's... that's a clip. Everyone's excited. But some and, of these uh... items have so many modifiers. Like you can have seven, let's say six, even just six modifiers. Using a divine to randomize the value seems like a dangerous thing to do. Like it's gambling a bit because you could also, <laughs> you know, everything goes down. You know what I mean? Welcome to Path of Exile. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, now, there are tools, there are metacrafts, which is probably not something we're going to talk about today. Yeah. But there are ways to say only reroll prefixes or only reroll suffixes, and you can kind of just, uh, you know, target certain things. Okay. So, uh, what's okay. the next step? So, the next step is we're going to talk about uh, the next level of rarity. So, uh, you're not going to use this right away. I want you to start off. Actually, we can use it right away. Um so this is the regal orb. This blue is, and yellow. I you can see it on the design. Blue and yellow. Okay. You see, yep, exactly. It goes from blue to yellow. So this upgrades a magic item to a rare item. Here we go. Yeah, go for it. So, so did it, it did still keep my chaos resistance and my maximum life, though. I see that. Okay. Exactly. So that's why we started with alteration and augment spamming. You want to, usually when you do this, you go for the prefix and suffix that you want. And then you can use a regal orb to just add one more modifier. No matter what, it will only add one more modifier to go to a rare item. Um, there are ways to make fewer than three mod rare items, but by default, a rare item will always drop with at least three modifiers. Because and up it has to, to have six? And up to six. Yep. Okay, okay. This unlocks the ability to have three prefixes and three suffixes for pretty much every item. Flasks, again, can only be magic. They can only have one prefix and suffix. Um, but for the vast majority of items, this will then upgrade the ability to have three prefixes and three suffixes. Um, so yeah, now you have a rare item. Uh, you can be happy with just this if you want to. 
Right. Or you can say, you know what? I don't like this item whatsoever. I changed my entire mind. And you can use the scouring orb, the white one, to just start over again. And it's white because we're bringing it back down to white. Yep. So will it keep the strength? Yes, because that's the implicit. Okay. Yep. No, is it? it yes. uh, the implicit yes. is inherent to the base type of the item. Right. Heavy belt always comes with strength. So you, you get that. Yeah. Um, now uh, look at the uh, alchemy orb. So the alchemy orb upgrades a normal item to a rare item. It is effectively the exact same thing as an orb of transmutation. Right, it except it's goes... gold. Exactly. Right. And here we have four. And it's between three and six, right, is what we should be expecting. And the yeah, okay, we got new rules, mac maximum energy shield, mana, cold resistance, and increased flash charge recovery rate. Okay, how many of these prefixes and suffixes are there? Like am I uh, I'm rolling with I'm rolling through how many? <laughs> do, do you want to take a look? Sure. All right. Open up the website craftofexile.com. Okay. You're scaring me. Craftofexile.com. Okay. I've heard about this one before. Craftofexile.com. Where do I go? All right. Yeah, we're not gonna spend too too much time getting to the details. This is a very complex tool. Um, but the most useful thing that you can do here, so in the top middle, uh, click on jewelry. Belts are jewelry. That's the thing that always messes with my head. Yes. I don't think of belts as jewelry in real life, but <laughs> um, then click belt. Yeah. And then click heavy belt. Uh, uh, in the upper, yeah, sorry. It, the interface gets a little overwhelming. No, what? Um, yeah. Where, okay. where am I yeah, where it says jewelry and then base. Um, yeah. Go to belt, item and then item, click heavy belt. Yep. And then choose an item, heavy belt. So this is the belt exactly. that I have right now, actually. Right. Yep. No influence, I'm guessing. Oh, these are and, all, uh, all of them? Oh. These are all modifiers. So further down are the more advanced things that are don't roll naturally. But at, at the top, all of these uh, these top two uh, columns have all of the modifiers that you can roll. And click on one of them okay. just to expand it. Let's have a look at one that I've had, like plus armor. Okay. So there are eight different tiers of armor. Right. And you can see the restricted item level of these tiers. So in the top, at that top uh, part of the interface again, where it says eye level, you see a little pencil. It, right to, to the yeah. right of import item. Right yeah. there. Type in 69, which is our item level. And then just I'd probably hit enter. Maybe not. No, you don't have to hit enter. And then now go expand to armor the armor again. again. And see, this is what, okay, these are what are actually going to be available to me. Yep, so this is how uh, you are not able to access tiers 1, 2, and 3 of the armor because the item level of the base is too low. Yet I feel like we had tier 1 earlier on. Did I imagine that, or was that something different? That was something different, yeah. Okay. That was the uh, the reduced flask, I believe. Oh, okay. Um, which I have here probably too, right? Re in uh, <laughs> where you reduce flask charges. Oh, and there's only yep, there's one. There's only one tier. Yep. Right. Wow. Okay. 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 <laughs> yeah. All right. So, and, yeah, and, this, I don't want to get too deep into this. Um, yeah. But, uh, so we can look at it for just another second. Yeah, um, please. You'll yeah. see the weight here, because it is uh, it's good to have like a rough understanding of what weight means. So if you go to, if you look in the top, top-ish, where it says prefixes, you'll see there are 53 tiers total of modifiers that you can get, with a total weight of 43,700. What is weight? So weight is, the way that you can think about it, is think of a big jar with a bunch of marbles in it. Okay. And each marble corresponds to a certain uh, a certain modifier that you can get. So look at armor. You see that there are, you can roll four different tiers on your armor, and each one has a weight of 1,000. Okay. So imagine a gigantic jar with 43,700 marbles in it. Okay. 1,000 of them are, are named uh, tier four armor. And then another 1,000 are named tier five armor. And when you roll a prefix on the item, you stick your hand in the jar and you pull out one marble. Oh my god! Is that and where there's two so percent? Is that is that the correlation? There's two percent chance so to roll the, this. So the percent the percent here is if you were adding just a prefix, you have a two point two percent chance of getting tier four armor. If you were going to add a prefix or a suffix, you have a one point zero three one percent chance of hitting tier four armor because it's adding up the weights of your prefixes and your suffixes. So when I was rolling earlier on, there was actually a one percent chance that I would roll that. I mean, I'm sure it's equivalent, but still. 
Yep, there was a 1% chance to hit tier 4 armor every time you rolled. That's crazy, in a way. If that's, I mean, how are you supposed to plan ahead? Because <laughs> let's say I was like, I really need tier 4 armor. How am I supposed to get that? <laughs> There's a lot of stuff that you can do. So, like, for okay. example, look at what we're doing here. Uh, by the item level being restricted, you can't roll above tier 4. So... If for some reason, imagine right. you wanted tier four, but never any higher. Yeah. By having a lower item level item, you're actually removing tiers one, two, and three from the pool, increasing the percent chance that you get tier four armor. Okay. Um, also, I, I don't want to get too much into mod groups, but if you look at those purple numbers on the right side of the column, yeah. those are mod groups. Um, oh. What that means is if you have a modifier from that group with that number, you cannot have another modifier from that group with that number. So, for example, you'll see you have both Flask Life Recovery and Flask Mana Recovery. They're both in Tier 2, or two, Mod Group 2 at the top. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. If you, have, if you already have one of those modifiers and you add another prefix, you cannot get the other one. One blocks the other one. So this is a, this is a tool that we can use. So, for example, right. if you could craft one of those before you add a prefix, you will block all of the weight from the other modifier from being added. Right. Wow. <laughs> okay, so yeah, this so, is yeah, this so, is how it goes, basically. This is how okay, this, this is a good is, way to see this it. This is how it gets a lot more advanced. There are way more tools here, but I do want to really emphasize the more uh basic the more basic tools that you have access yeah, to. Yeah, I, I guess this is also like when when I why I think I'm overwhelmed at the moment when I'm look when I'm opening Path of Exile and I have to craft is because of all these guys here. It's because yep, of we how. Can ignore all that. Yeah, the let's nice ignore all that is, for now. But yeah. Yeah. The nice thing is the vast majority of what you need to do for a basic build, particularly you look like a league starter build, the stuff that people are going to be talking about over the next week, um, they're going to be ignoring lots of the advanced stuff. The right. vast majority of items that you're going to look at are going to say, "Hey, buy an essence," and the essence will just do one thing. It'll just guarantee one modifier, and we can talk about essences a little bit later. Um, It'll guarantee one modifier. It'll say, hey, use a couple essences until it looks good and it's usable and just use it. I've actually and seen that in a league starter build and I was like, okay, it so the thing about builds is that like me, when you follow one, you have a tendency to, to do what it says and not necessarily to understand. That's how I got most of my items. It's like, you don't really understand what you're doing. So yeah, I, I'm curious about essences too, for sure. Um, yep. So I guess like, uh, do you have any advice for any new people like what what would like an average person playing during the campaign play around with this for um or would you go further than this you think during the campaign um i mean during the campaign you probably won't do more than these fundamental tools and actually i want to i want to show just a couple other things here just to really make it clear actually just two other items you have i give you a chance orb already and i will give you this orb as well the exalted orb the Exalted Orb. So, um, you know, look at what the Exalted Orb does. So it augments a rare item with a new random modifier. Also, it's a gold with multiple gold heads, so... Yep, makes makes more gold modifiers, exactly. So technically, considering this item here has four, it has three prefixes, so I've, I've kind of completed the prefixes, and I've got one suffix. I'm going to use this twice on this item. I'm going to get two suffixes, right? Exactly. Additionally. Okay, yep. let's check that out. Uh, right, plus 37 to strength and plus 26 to maximum energy shield. And I cannot go further because there's no more space for more mods. Well, not with this item anyway. Okay. Exactly. So um, the the real good corollary, what I really like to look at here is uh, put the exalted orb next to the augmentation orb. Uh, okay. Exalted orb next to the augmentation orb. Yeah. Yep, and then put the transmute next to the alchemy. Uh, yeah. Okay, and there oh, you go. Um, okay. actually, though they basically do the same thing, but one is for magic items and one is for rare items. Okay. So, I, I think this. I, I really want to just draw this relationship here, so it's like very clearly understood that a transmute just is normal to magic. And then an augment is plus one modifier to magic. And an, uh, an alchemy is the exact same thing, but only for rares. And the same thing for exalteds. Right. So I have a sword here. They do here. the same thing. Oh, it's corrupted. Never mind. Okay, but <laughs> uh, I could, for example, just go back to scouring this. Goes back to normal. And then 
why? So can I ask you why would I use a orb of transmutation on this rather than an orb of alchemy? Is it because yep. I probably have more orbs of transmutations, or tell me? Uh, that's a very good question. Um, so, like I said before, uh, the, the most important thing is if you want to target very specific modifiers. Uh, oh, also alterations. You don't have any alterations in your inventory. I get. I'm missing two very important ones here. We have two more uh, currencies that do the same thing. Um, so, the orb of alteration will reroll a magic item, Ooh. and an orb of chaos, which I didn't, I forgot to have you use. An orb of chaos does the exact same thing, but for a rare item. Right. And every time you do it, it just has the set percent chance to get X number of modifiers within the restrictions of a blue or yellow item. And right. yeah. So the big thing here is that uh, an orb of alteration is much, much cheaper and much more common than an, uh, a chaos orb. So what you can do is just spam the orb of alteration to really target one or two modifiers that are very, very hard to get. Um, and no matter what, you're guaranteed to not get more than two modifiers. So there's certain modifiers, like on an amulet, a plus one all spell skill gems. I think it's like a one out of 12,000 or one out of 16,000. It's some very, very hard percentage chance to hit. And if you're going for a modifier that's that rare and you want to target it and you want to craft something very, very good and expensive off of that, for example, if you're rolling a Chaos Orb, it's actually more likely, because you're going to roll up to four modifiers instead of up right, to two. Right, to get that specific <clears> one. It's more likely to hit that one. Okay. However, you are guaranteed to have at least three modifiers, right, when you're using a Chaos Orb. Right. And you could have, you know, up to two, you could have minimum two modifiers that you might want to remove, because you're most likely going to get trash modifiers in addition to your one really good one. However with uh with magic rolling with an orb of alteration yeah you are guaranteed to have never more than one additional modifier you can never have w more than one trash modifier okay and we do have access to tools that make it easy to deterministically remove uh, i'm using the word deterministically but to safely <laughs> okay safely with you know some randomness uh remove that trash modifier and then craft up from there you can target that one good mod right and guarantee have a base with just that one modifier Okay, that's interesting. So as a new player, I guess you kind of want to figure out what you're aiming for when you craft, right? In a way, like it'd be, it'd be exactly. good to kind of have a quick look at like, all right, I'm looking at this. I'm, I want to have armor as a must, armor or maximum life. Like that's really what I want. And potentially because these are cheaper, you could go, uh, I could use this one. Sorry, I could use augments. Okay, so when I reforge, is there possibility of two? Yes. Okay, so I'll continue. Maximum life, chaos resistance. Resistance is always good, so I'll keep that one on, and I'm happy with that. So now, I should be able to upgrade a... So I can't upgrade a normal item to a rare item, can I? You will need one of these. I will need one of those. All right, thanks. Blue to yellow. There we go. So I'm like, okay, I'm happy with these modifiers. Cool. Add that on. And I've got plus 36 strength. And I'm like, all right, that's perfect. That's all I want. But actually, I just want to make sure that I keep those modifiers. And I I have still space for three more. So I might as well augment three times like this, for example. And like augment three times to get three more. But what if I'm not happy with flask mana recovery rate? What do I do now? Well, then yeah. we can do this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can use one of these, Orb of Annulment. But this is a gamble, because this one says removes a random modifier. I've got four. I want to keep three. Yep. Yep. <laughs> so that's it. <laughs> you yep. guys are crazy. Okay, so let me... So potentially, I don't... I, there's, the chances are too big. So if I go maximum energy shield. I'm a warrior. I don't need energy shields. And increase stun... Duration. I'm not stunning enemies, so if I want to take one of these out, I have to gamble three times. Well, I just have to gamble. Hopefully, hopefully it's a chaos resistance or any of those other three that leaves. And yeah, <laughs> okay. And I do that again. Yeah, perfect. Well, I'm trying to get the the, the other three. No, I know. Two, three. Oh, it's a sarcastic. Perfect. Oh my god. Perfect. <laughs> That's it. All right. Boom. You have now experienced. The real true emotion of crafting in Path of Exile. Oh, God damn it. All right, perfect. <laughs> yep. And now I've got this item that I, I've used all this currency yep. on and I don't want this item anymore. 
<laughs> yep, exactly. And then you just end up with trash. You scour it, and then uh, I'll teach you something. Uh, click on the item and pick it up, and then hit enter. Type slash destroy. Is I just gonna? Yeah. Okay. See and ya. then there you go. And then the memory's gone. You, you're a clean slate. You're perfectly happy, and you don't have anything to worry about ever again. That's really interesting. Okay. Yeah. Not bad. So. It is possible, though, like, I guess if we had to push it a tiny bit more, it is possible to... I, I remember losing essences quite early on. Oh, I got a wand. So if I use one of these essences, for example, where is it? Uh, essences. So it is possible to loot essences quite early on. What do these do, I guess? Upgrades a normal item to rare or reforges a rare item. Oh, okay, that's interesting. So this is a... Plague Goad Wand, which I, <laughs> I'm i just going to scour, right? Okay. Interestingly, the gems remain. Cool. Uh, I've got this one essence here, and it says upgrades a normal item to rare or reforges a rare item. What do you use essences for? So, um, if you go to your essence tab, do you have an essence tab? Or do you yes, have, like, yes, yes, yes. I'm fancy. I got one. Yes. Nice. Beautiful. Very important tab. Uh, go Look at your lower tier essences. So I, this would I, be I on the left, right? No, that's high tier. Oh. Yeah, high is usually better. Um, so, so the low tier ones, they're little, the little dinky ones. It is important to know that they all don't reforge rares. The lower tier ones will only upgrade normal, oh. like in alchemy. Yeah, okay. Whereas the higher tier ones will operate more like a chaos orb, and they can actually reroll as well. So, so this is just very important to know. Like you can't spam the low tier ones okay. on, a, on a rare item. You'd so, have to scour after each time. What do you use this for then? Or what would anybody so, use this for? Yeah. If you read what the essence does is it will put the exact modifier that it says yeah. on the base type. So if you use this essence on the wand, it will it you can see it says other weapon. So it says two-handed melee weapon. Oh, this right. is not a two-handed melee weapon. Okay. Other weapon adds, you know, 1 to 2 to 3 to 4 cold damage. So if you just use it, it will make a rare item. It's always a rare item that will have that modifier, guaranteed. So, but it operates like an alchemy, so it can have up to six modifiers. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's a big step up, because it's white to yellow. and Yep, it's just like an alchemy. Right, it's, it is just like an alchemy, except you have one that you're sure to get. So you're exactly. gambling a little less, I guess. Exactly, yep. And that's why essences are so cool. Um, now, the higher tier ones, if you grab like a higher tier of like that essence of hatred, it will allow you, I think it's like the top three tiers. You can, uh, yeah, the top three tiers, you can reroll like chaos orbs. So that way you don't have to use a scour between it. And the tier of modifier will, uh, will also go up. This isn't always true, but usually the tier one essence modifier is actually a higher tier than you can roll naturally on the item. Okay. Some tier one modifiers, some tier one essence modifiers are actually like tier zero because they're so good. Okay. Wow. Okay. So if I want, I can use this to upgrade a normal item to rare. So this will also scour and like it will reroll the whole thing. Uh, no, not that I think is that tier. Oh, that's like tier four. Oh, that's not good enough. You need yeah. You need tier three or higher. How do I know the tiers? Uh, it going left to right. It goes one, two, three. Left to right. Oh. Again. Uh, oh, the stream ended. I'm still here. Oh, okay. Uh. All right, I clicked it again. Yeah, it closed. All right, I reopened it. It's fine. <laughs> yep, so deafen deafening. So if you go all the way on the left, deafening is tier one. Um, right, okay, yes. Deafening is yep. tier one. And those are good, right? Those those will re-roll the item also? Yep, tier tier one, two, and three will all re-roll the item. Tier one, so two, and three. And screaming. Okay. So for example, if I use this shrieking essence of hatred, it will re-roll this item. So it basically scours it completely, and then it will add the cold damage that is guaranteed on this other weapon adds X cold damage. So we're going to go from 2 to 3 to 75, 3 to 7, so 145, right? Yep. And I can just do that nonstop if I want better rolls, I guess. Exactly. Right, okay. But also, of course, we've got all the other stuff that's been added to it, which I can't change unless I use a Orb of Annulment. And then I can add stuff by augmenting with this. Exactly. Okay, cool. So you have you have full control with randomness over the number of modifiers and what's on there. And you can reroll it however you like. Okay, so 
I think the internet can be a bit overwhelming for new players when it comes to like the build guides and they they talk a lot about you know different use this kind of mechanic use this crafting mechanic from this season stuff like that. Um, how do you realistically, if you wanted someone, if you wanted to help someone get better, you can't play with them like twenty four seven. Um, so is there some kind of like little exercise or something, or what would you give as advice, I guess, to new players to get better at crafting? <laughs> are you are you setting me up to plug my videos? Because <laughs> um, I'll do it. Uh, no, realistically, honestly, the most important thing is to not be afraid. Uh, this is a thing that like, that's why I the very first thing that I did, like no matter what we talk about today, the most important thing that I want to get across is that like looking, look at these orbs for their function over their value as trade items. And because the value of them as trade items is directly tied to how they function in terms of crafting. So, so can and, you, and we can show this. Yeah, I'm, I'm just wondering, like, so what makes, why is a divine, you know, a thousand or, I mean, what, why is a divine so, um, yeah, why do people love divines, I guess? So very specifically, do you know what a metacraft is? I've heard the term in the... GGG live stream yesterday, and I was like, I wonder what that is. <laughs> okay, uh, go to your crafting bench. Yes. And uh, yeah, click on it. Yes. Then type uh, prefix in the search here box. I want to see if you have this. You do have it. So this is very exactly why. There's a few of these. So prefixes can't be changed. Suffixes can't be changed. Uh, cannot roll attack modifiers. Cannot roll caster modifiers. And there might be, oh, and can have up to three crafted modifiers. So those are, I believe, all of the metacrafts. And what these are, are the most powerful crafts that you have access to. And they cost two divines. And this is exactly why divines are worth so much. Um, it, fun fact, a year or two ago, um, this craft used to cost two exalts. And we used to trade in exalts as our highest tier currency. But GGG wanted to flip around the economy. And they all they had to do was change the price from exalts to divines, and then divines became the new the most big valued thing. currency. Okay. Um, because the best, most valuable things that people care about are high crafted rares, no matter what. There are no uniques in the game, arguably like, you know, those double crafted mage bloods or something, but there really aren't uniques that are worth as much as the best crafted rare that you can get because they are so powerful and so hard to make. And because of the mirror, which we're not going to use today, <laughs> because of the mirror, which will make a duplicated copy of the bet, like the value of the mirror, it will duplicate a rare and it'll make an exact copy that's no longer modifiable, but the base copy is not changed. And so you can make infinite copies of the best item in the game with the, with the mirror, which is incredibly rare. You'll get like one per 5,000 hours played, you know, besides Affliction League. <laughs> um, and all of the, like, basically everything trickles down from the fact that a mirror can copy the best rare in the game. And to craft the best rare in the game, you're going to use thousands of divine, literally thousands of really? divines <laughs> to craft that best rare in the game. And that's why a mirror is worth like a thousand divines. And people will pay an additional fee to make that copy. They will use their mirror, but they'll also pay like another couple hundred divines as like a fee to the person who crafted the item. So they make profit every time they make a copy. And the entire economy trickles down from just that one interaction. So, so um, we, can, okay. we can show something. Here, we'll show something real quick. I, okay. will, I will give you something right here. Let's, let me make something real quick. Um, da, 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 da. Yeah, that, that sounds really cool. All right, let's do this. I will trade you this. Boom, boom. Okay. All right, now go to the crafting bench. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, <laughs> giddy. Okay, so now <laughs> I, I tap the, prefix. Yep, put in that robe. So this is a brimstone salvation conjurer's vestment. Okay. Okay. And, and click prefixes cannot be changed and craft it on. Okay, crafting now. Okay. Excellent, you have it. So if you hold alt over the item, you'll see that you now have full prefixes and full suffixes. And prefixes cannot be changed is always is a suffix, and suffixes cannot be changed is a prefix. What this means, there are some exceptions. Fossils and essences do not respect metamods. So do not, if you want to use metamods, do not use essences with them. You have to start with essences or fossils. Um, 
but all basically all other currencies and all other crafts respect meta mods. Okay. What this means is uh, use a scour on the item. Th yeah. This to me is it's always scary, but use a scour. On I was the gonna item. ask, are you sure? <laughs> yep. So use a scour. Boom. Right. So you were able to scour the item, but because it had the meta mod that was crafted, all of your prefixes stayed. But you it, can like is the, so the, this is a way. Yeah. Right. Yeah. This is a way that you you know you were saying before. Hey, you know maybe I have three prefixes that I like, and maybe I just added a suffix that is bad. Yeah. I have to yellow a null and just like oh maybe I got a one out of four. I'm gonna lose the mods that I care about. With the meta mod, you can say no. My prefixes are protected. I will not lose them. And you can use a chaos orb. You can use a scour. Um, you but can use the, a harvest uh, a harvest reroll. The meta mod though has gone is gone now. Is gone away. This is why it's thousands of divines. Oh. Every time you do the craft, there are some, you know, like an exalt or something. Like you could use an annul and maybe not hit the meta mod, or you could hit the meta mod, right? If you had two suffixes, you could 50 50 remove the meta mod instead of the one modifier, and you might have to recraft it over and over again until you win that coin. But flip. the annulment would, um, as long as the meta mod is there, the annulment would never take off a prefix. Exactly. Your prefixes right. are protected. And so, so this is a way you can target and just like try to make the perfect item. Whew. So how much of POE is trying to make the perfect item? Um, it is usually reserved for the people that are willing to invest the time, effort, and money into doing it. <laughs> um, the highest tier, I've done mirror tier crafting, for example, like I played the game for, I want to say maybe seven years before I ever made a mirror tier item. It wasn't any, it wasn't anything that I really want to pursue. Um, and it also took me leveraging the wealth of my community as well. We worked together to right. make mirror tier items. Um, it wow. took literally, like I have videos, like the the amulet that I crafted, I made a deck stacking amulet. It costed 1,500 divines <laughs> to craft. Um, but then we made a handful of mirrored copies from it and we kind of were able to share with the community making free copies. Like if people had a mirror, I wouldn't charge them a fee and we could just make copies of that amulet for everybody. And so it was like this really cool community effort, but it took thousand, you know, fifteen hundred divines to craft it in the first place, Insane. and like four in four days of effort. Oh my god! Um, okay. So yeah, it's it's a very intense process to make the perfect items, and it gets harder every single league as they add new crafts. There will be things like you. There's tools to add new implicits and do all these sorts of things that are that require just kind of repeating the same thing over and over again until you get that tier one modifier, and it becomes uh, it's a lot of work. And what I really want to emphasize is you don't, none of that's necessary. 99.99% uh, of the game with sub perfect items, you can be incredibly powerful and incredibly happy. And what I really want to highlight is the next thing. And I think this is like, uh, this is just what I want to leave people with and understanding how simple crafting can actually be. Okay. Um, so the scepter that I gave you is yes. something called a fractured item. Yes. So. If you look at that one modifier, it is a fractured, I believe that is tier one lightning damage to spells. It is. So, yep, and it's actually nearly perfectly rolled. What this means is it is a, it, you cannot remove this modifier. There are ways to remove it with like weird, weird edge case type of things. But um, by default, this is something that will never remove no matter what. So you can just hit this thing with a scouring orb right now and you'll see what happens. Um, it stays. It never goes away. Um, what this does mean is the item cannot go white. The item will always be at least blue. This has some consequences that may be kind of negative. Um, for example, you can't use an alchemy on it. Uh, if you want, you can't use those low tier essences on it. Um, this is very important for if you wanted to essence spam certain modifiers. But you cannot remove this modifier. And you can just buy a fractured base if you're in trade. Uh, that has a modifier that you already care about. Like, let's say you want to go for a scepter that has some set of like four different modifiers. You want to go for just generic lightning damage, generic spell damage, flat lightning damage to spells. Anything like that is good for your build and you're happy. Um, so you, what you can do is go to the trade website. Like fractured items can drop from rare monsters. You can get them, I believe, from heist chests. It comes from a, diff a bunch of different sources. You can make it yourself with a fracturing orb, but that's a, an expensive <laughs> endeavor. Um, so, you know, let's say you have four or five uh, different modifiers that are good for your build. Spell damage, lightning damage to spells, lightning damage, etc. Um, you looked on the trade website, you just search for, you just, you can set up a search and look for all four of those fractured individually, and you just buy the cheapest one. I, bl I believe I bought this for like 10, 20 chaos, 
because I just needed one of those four modifiers. Right. What you can do now, two of those modifiers are actually essence mods. So uh, lightning damage to spells is an essence mod, but also spell damage is an essence mod. So what we can do is look and see in your essence tab if you have a, a an Hello. essence of woe is what we're going to look for. How'd you write woe? <laughs> like yeah, this. woe. Uh, W-O-E. Woe, like woe is me. I'm so sad. <laughs> so yeah, you have shrieking essence of woe right here. Um, and in fact, just a little tip, you can click upgrade on the, the bottom middle there. And this will uh, click, then click your shrieking essence of woe. Ooh. Boom. And uh, click escape. This will do, you, you can also do this as a vendor recipe. But then take that deafening essence of well. This will give you the higher tier one. Um, this will guarantee you get the tier one uh, spell damage to your one-handed wand. You'll get 83 to 94. Um, now, target is not normal rare. You Ooh. have to do what first to craft on this? I need to upgrade it to a rare? Yes. Or, yes, because it's a blue. So I, as to do that, I use this. Regal, right? Exactly. Okay. What okay. if I don't like 20... Well... I could just annul that. Annul the 20 chance to ignite, no? You could, but you don't have to. Right? And then because use what, that. What does the essence do, right? And then, boom. Right, you don't have to because the essence will just kind of reroll that regardless. And now we have the 88% increased spell damage. Fire, increased exactly. fire damage, cool damage, which is great if you've got all these, uh, you know, if you're doing a multi-elemental damage build, I guess this is perfect. So just like that, though, um, you know, if you if you really summarize what's on this weapon really good tier one lightning damage to spells and 88 plus 30 percent on the implicit increased spell damage you are getting what 128 percent elemental da or spell damage in general wow. as well as the flat lightning damage to spells just those two modifiers with the implicit alone is a very usable scepter that for any strong build like this is all you have to do um find a fractured base hit it with as low as one single essence that will guarantee one other modifier and this is something that is usable and for a strong, efficient build. This alone will likely carry you into tier 16 maps. You don't need more than this. Wow. And even better, uh, hold alt on it. I think you might have full modifiers. Uh, well, I wanted to ask do you, full... does the um, does that golden prefix, the, the one that is just like on it regardless, does that take a prefix slot or is it additional? It does take a prefix slot. Yeah, okay, so it, this it is, is full. Up that slot. Okay. So let's uh let's try to improve it. Uh use an annul on this item. Uh an annul. Uh yes. Okay, removes go, random. Perfect. So I don't and want please to Please don't remove the spell damage. Okay. Let's go. All right, perfect. So, <laughs> go to the crafting bench now. Okay. Oh go. Get out of my way. There we go. Put it in. Type lightning and craft uh increase lightning damage. Second to last right there. R right, this one. Okay. Yep. So Boom, I got Boom. fire, cold, and lightning. Yep, and we just got, you know, for a, if this is just a lightning damage only uh, build, right, because we went for the flat lightning damage to spells, we also just got, you know, we were able to craft on an additional modifier. Oh, that's so cool. So this is, this is the fundamental. Like, okay. no exaggeration, this is 90% of all crafting. Wow. Is find a, like, modern crafting back in the day, uh, we didn't have fractured items. Yeah. But this is really what it's simplified down to. For most builds, this is what you'll find in most build guides or you know, crafting guides that what they recommend. Buy a fractured base, get the cheapest fracture that you can, right? Like um, on a pair of gloves, if I wanted spell suppression, life, and chaos res, search for all three of those and just buy the cheapest one, right? Ide spell suppression, ideally, because it's harder to get, you can't hit it with an essence, but you you could get like fractured, uh, fractured max res and then use a chaos res or fractured max, max life then use a Chaos Res Essence and use that until you hit Spell Suppression. Or if you have Fractured Life, you, or if you have Fractured Chaos Res, use a, an Essence of Greed, which is a Life Essence, until you hit Spell Suppression. Right, right. okay, there's so you much. Buy, there's so yeah. much, right. Okay, but at the very base anyway, it's covered, I think. We've, we've kind of done, this is as far as you need to go if you wanna, you know, th this is already, if you know this, you could go hundreds of hours in PoE. Like this is already easily. this is enough easily. easily. Yep. Easily. Okay. Wow. Well, damn. That's a lot. Okay. Cool. So <laughs> that's gonna be really helpful too. So I, I guess it's good to also encourage new play players to play around with crafting, and um, 
your builds guide that if you follow a build guide, usually it'll tell you like what are the modifiers you're looking for. So potentially uh, try and roll those on the items. Uh, but yeah, yeah, that's that's really good. And we haven't even touched about t- touched on gems already. But like this is this is really good anyway. This is really really good. Um, okay, cool. Well, listen, thank you so much for coming on and like telling us all about crafting. I think I have a better idea. I'm much more confident now anyway uh, in terms of like the items and stuff like that. And it's so helpful to know that y- the icons are not only there for show. They they have some kind of connection to what they do. So we, for example, transmutation from you know clay to blue and here from clay to gold, for example. So yeah, it's great to know that that is a thing. Um, yeah, so thank you so much. So you've got a bunch of videos, right? Like, tell us more about that. Well, what if if they want to go further? If anybody who's watching this video wants to go further, what should they go on your channel to have a look at? Yeah, I mean, there's really just two two videos that go into everything. Um, so there's the first video, which is uh, how to craft everything. That is, uh, <laughs> you can just go to my my channel and and type uh, and just click popular. It's my most popular video. Um, you just it's a two hour ish video from years ago. I apologize. It was before I knew how to balance my sound levels, so they don't sound great. <laughs> but it uh, it really goes over those fundamentals. It went over everything that we just went over, as well as a lot more getting into fossils and all that type of stuff. Um, and then there's a follow-up video, which is also nearly two hours long, <laughs> um, for a total of almost four hours of wow. the video. Um, but the follow-up video I made just in the last year and that goes into a lot of detail about all of the more advanced stuff. And with the knowledge in those two videos, you can craft everything in the game. Everything. There, I don't wow. think there, between those two videos, there's a single real tip or anything that's missing. Maybe a couple edge cases about like beast levels or something. But yeah, I pretty much go over every technique that you can craft something from, hey, I just need a blue belt to get through the campaign to I want to craft mirror tier uh, <laughs> attribute stacking, crystallized omniscience items and everything in between. Um, and yeah, while it's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of detail, it's really just about planning, uh, planning and understanding the tools that you have. And the thing is mechanically at the end of the day, right? You can already feel it. It's kind of just spamming, right? It's just kind of spamming a thing. And gambling, rolling the dice. Right, and you're like, okay. And then I just try to yellow a null because I filled my suffixes and all oh, crap, I hit the good, I, I hit the good modifier, start over again. <laughs> okay, um, you know, but it seems to be something it. that excites you immensely because you've obviously done this for years. So this is like a reason to keep going, basically. You just love this. I, I you know, some people may disagree and there are people that, that have played for years that barely touch crafting. But I think, I firmly believe, like the, the whole economy, right? The economy is based on crafting. Um, under At the very least, understanding crafting and at the very least being able to understand basic crafting um, not only will save you a lot of money, like I can make a pair of boots and sell it for a divine. Like this is how people get, make a lot of early money is just being able to use that currency because, uh, if you buy items off people on the market, you will always be paying a premium for the risk that they took crafting that item. And they take, they take a little off the top, no matter what. And just knowing these tools, like, Hey, you know, early league, there's people with, uh, you know, 35% movement speed boots. If you know how to craft those for, you know, instead of spending one or two divines, you can just, you know, craft them yourself, throw them into, into the hoarder crafting station. You'll save a lot of money. You'll feel more comfortable in the game. And I guarantee you will have a lot more fun just interacting with, uh, you know, what I firmly believe is the best system in the game. Wow. Okay. Well, listen, thank you so much. I won't keep you more. Thank you so much, Sub. Uh, for anybody watching this, make sure to go check out his videos. Uh, subscribe to his channel. He does the best tutorials ever. Uh, and yeah, thank you so much for being a part of this uh, video. Join the Discord, click the like button, you know what to do, and we'll see you in the next one.